Anyway, um, I really only started to panic earlier this week when uh, my DG colleague in charge of technical solutions put an urgent call into my office and, uh, and said, Jane, I saw you on the agenda at CodeFest. Like, no offense, but what could you be talking about? <laughs> so, so full disclosure that I'm not at all a technical person. And in fact, I know really very little about the technical, uh, the inner workings of what makes a website work. But I am in charge of the website at Health Canada. I'm also in charge of marketing. And so that means at Health Canada, I'm the person that's trying to convince Canadians to you know, use condoms, breastfeed their baby, eat vegetables, and exercise. And that whole uh, you know, field of study is based on really understanding human behavior and knowing what the barriers and the incentives to, to encouraging people to do certain things is about. And I think there's a real link into creating websites. I am getting to a point. When I was given the gift of managing um, the website at Health Canada, which was a number of years ago, it struck me how little investment we made into understanding people at that time and how they use websites. And I think we've come a long way, and that's really what I'm going to be talking about today, just to give you, um, uh, to tell you our story, I think, from moving really from the worst possible website to, you know, a slightly better one with a view to get to, hopefully, a great uh, Canada website. And so I'm hoping, you know, some of you uh, can learn from some of our experiences. So prior to um, 2007 and 8, and, and Perth too was talking about this, how it used to be, um, our, our website was uh, a horror show, really. 80,000 pages of, of content that no one could find anything. It was a horror to navigate. Uh, it was a bit of a running joke if we ever wanted to you know, bury a study, we said, quick, put it on the website. No one will ever find it. Um, we, we invited Jerry McGovern down to talk to us, and he, it was like a kid in the candy store. He was so, he couldn't, we had to cut him off finally. He was showing us so many examples of how our website was absolutely um, the worst thing. I mean, you know, <laughs> it was gorillas who were bouncing the ball and no one even noticed that. So it was a bad situation. But that year we had a new minister come on board, Tony Clement, who um, you know, was a very savvy technical web guy himself and, and you know, he saw the situation and said, you know, no, no, this is the end. Uh, there's gonna be two big changes. We're going to create a brand new consumer-centered website called Healthy Canadians. And uh, it's going to skim off the top best content of Health Canada and just put it there for Canadians. And number two, it wasn't only going to have content from our department, it was going to have health content from many departments. Well, that, what followed was a great sort of gnashing of teeth and, and sort of predictions of doom and disaster and how could we ever do this. You know, briefing notes were prepared as to um, how this would never work. We had a brand, there's duplication. In short, it was sort of impossible. Um, but, you know, being new to the web area myself, I think we sat down with the team and we sort of had this aha moment. We said maybe, you know, it was sort of like the Grinch who stole Christmas. It was maybe this is actually a new opportunity. You know, a wonderful, amazing opportunity to rethink how we design and work on websites and uh, what our role was with respect to how to run a government website. You know, it helped that there was no choice, too, to make that happen. Um, so there were a bunch of things we did to, to make it work. Um, you know, some of them are, um, are listed here. We developed a, a project plan. We had a steering committee with other departments. We were really clear on the role that everyone had. You know, we would, uh, the web team ultimately would write the content. The owners were responsible for the accuracy of the content. But it was very important that it have a single voice. Uh, for the first time, we hired companies to do research, to, to do social listening and understand what Canadians were thinking about certain keywords that were important to them so that we could reflect that in the website. Um, we, for the first time, we had a, a dashboard and decided what we would be measuring. We also invested in social media, which really helped us in terms of helping to, to create the Healthy Canadians brand 
we had some money related to a, a campaign, so we, we did it slowly. This slide sort of outlines the process in terms of creating our social media snapshot. Again, what we did is found out what people were talking about out in the blogosphere, about certain things that were important to them, and then we reflected those in our social media. Um, we started out with just a Facebook page. It wasn't a Health Canada Facebook page, it was a Healthy Canadians page. So we weren't pushing corporate information, we were refining what people were talking about, and we were making content that they would find interesting. So our goal wasn't just you know, fans, it was engagement. And, um, and that really, you know, it worked exceptionally well that our levels of engagement are up over, over the 10% mark. And so things like, for example, Robin Williams' death this week, we would immediately jump on something like that, like that and promote mental health and where people could go. So we tried to do things that were tied in with, with um, people's current lives. So all that to say, we sort of matured as an organization um, in how we saw our web. And sort of it was web was no longer where we post our plan, our strategic plan, it became part of our strategic plan. So when web renewal came along, um, and we were approached by Treasure Board to um, be a theme lead, uh, Healthy Canadians had already taught us, you know, we knew what our top tasks were, uh, we knew how to bring partners together and work with them, so we put our hand up to, to be part of it. You know, it's sort of if you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. Um, but we really had to change how we structured ourselves, and I think Perth was talking quite a bit about, you know, what creates a team that uh, embraces innovation and collaboration. And we, you know, way back, we were just, there was a team of publishers who were told to post things and not, you know, not challenge anything. And we really had to evolve into a team of very, very skilled people who were confident and, um, and valued in the organization. So this is a little diagram of how, at, uh, in our department, the e-communications division is set up. And you'll see that uh, we have people who are in strategic planning, so focused on you know, metrics and building policies. We have a strong technical base. And then we have strategic advisors that we put a lot of emphasis in terms of the team being able to think strategically, how to link to government priorities, how to read metrics, how to integrate and cross-promote, um, how to get knowledge about the client, about uh, aspects of the web, design, content, standards, about the tools that were available. And not only to have the technical skills, but really the skills to around conflict resolution, because there was a lot of conflict with internal clients who wanted different things, uh, about negotiating and building relationships. Um, you know, sometimes technical people need communication skills, and certainly communication skills people need to learn the technical skills. So we invested heavily in training and development. And uh, I think that really helped us grow to have a team that is exceptionally strong. And when the whole renewal project, um, that's a GC wrap, Government of Canada Web Renewal, I don't even know what that is actually, but <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we decided that we couldn't sort of fly the plane and fix it at the same time. We needed to create a special team dedicated to you know, the transfer over to Canada.ca. So we used talent management, we took our high flyers, we gave them an opportunity and, um, and uh, put people on a specific team to work in a matrix organization to make that happen. Um, so it was critical we knew from, from how our, our poorly our websites were. You know, part of the problem was uh, when we went around to see our internal clients, half of them were writing for who they thought was reading our website, which were, you know, low, uh, grade six level Canadians who needed health information, and the other half were writing for health professionals and doctors. And so as a result, the website was a total... Uh, so we thought it was key to get everyone on the same page at the beginning as to what this new health theme was about. So we brought all the partners, 23 partners together, and worked through a card sorting exercise to, to come to a vision that would guide everything we did. And, and I just put the vision here as an example. We tried to make it, I think as, as uh, Lisa was saying, not something, we tried to make it very do and action oriented. So we're enabling decision making as opposed to just 
having people gaze at information. Um, so we also set up what we knew would be the key pillars, uh, engagement, information architecture, governance, and content renewal. Um, and really, I would say, and, and this is perhaps my bias, engagement took a lot more of our time than we thought. Uh, I think in, in marketing, we say people have to hear the message seven times before they actually hear it. With respect to web renewal, it's at least 28 times. Um, there's no doubt. <laughs> um, I mean, if, if people have seen sort of that bell curve on change management, you know, our team was way over almost, you know, past the, the, the apex. Most people in the department would be, what do you mean there's only going to be one government website? And they still say that. So, uh, you know, you have to invest a lot, a lot of time and engagement, uh, more, than, more than we thought. Um, we um, also spent a lot of time working on our information architecture. I'll talk that more on the other side. We phased it in terms of making it easier to manage. So there was a coalition of willing, like there were certain content people who were excited about the idea of going to Canada.ca. They were ready. Their content was in a good place. So we put them first in line. And then we, we've put uh, other people at the back so they have more time to sort of come to terms with the idea. And then we worked really closely in collaboration with um, Treasury Board. As I said, you know, um, if you can't beat them, join them. We got on every single committee that sort of exists, uh, only because Laura would have beaten us up if we didn't, and she forced us to. But, but you can only influence things if you're, if you're part of it. So that was really our, um, our approach. Um, and we did, you know, at, at Health Canada, there's a lot of scientists, and they're very evidence-based. Uh, and so, really, if you're trying to talk to them and explain why things have to change, you really have to come with, um, you know, a lot of research and evidence to ex because everyone feels they're a content expert. I mean, it's their content, and they're an expert on that content. I feel very jealous sometimes of technical people because they can go to another place with a whole different language, and then people get frightened of that language and assume that that must be correct because they don't understand it. But um, so we have a lot of challenges around. So these are some of the activities we took to make sure we were you know, going to be developing the health theme um, correctly. Some of them I know are being talked about at this conference uh, in some of the small groups quite a bit. Uh, we did sort of an online user survey uh, to find out really who were the demographics, who was coming, uh, were they satisfied, you know, how old were they, so that we really could you know, at the end, we created avatars of the actual people that we knew we were writing for, and that helped the content to be developed for certain people. You know, there was the, the mom with two small children who was trying to see what, you know, how to deal with bullying in the school, and she was also caring for her older parents who had an adverse drug reaction. So, you know, when you understood who you were writing for, it, the writing became easier. Uh, we did, uh, you know, website analytics for over a period of, ye of a year to actually again, find out who were our users, what were they looking for, how did they get to the site, how are they accessing the site, what the most popular content is. Um, then we did uh, heuristic reviews, so looking again at content usability and design. We checked the IA against uh, the Dan Brown's eight principles of IA and Jacob Nielsen's 10 usability heuristics. We did a comparative review, which we found really interesting. So we took other sites, similar uh, in mandate to ours, so things like WebMD or um, the Centers for Disease Control in the States, and we saw how they were, you know, um, how they were presenting information, how they were setting things up, and we saw some best and worst practices from them as well. Um, we did a lot of user journeys. Uh, we worked with um, Lisa, in fact, to do some of those, um, and then. We called stakeholders, and we had one-on-one -on -one interviews with, uh, with some stakeholders. And then we had to go around to all the people in the department. So we had over 50 sort of client interviews to find out what people's needs were and, and frustrations were and their hopes were. So we used all of that together to guide us. And I think um, that's sort of what has put us on the right path. And so what are the things we found? I think, I think this is common to a lot of government websites. Tons of duplication. So things like 
Uh, a topic like food safety, for example, there were at least five departments who had the same information, um, but it was inconsistent, so different language, different statistics, different definitions, which is a bit frightening, actually. Um, the majority of our content was actually written in the opposite of an inverted pyramid, pyramid style, which is very typical of government communication. So, so, oh, you're looking for how much folic acid to take in pregnancy? First, let me tell you Health Canada's mission and mandate. <laughs> <laughs> Why we're so good and how much we spent on this issue and what we're giving to communities to do about this issue. And then if you bury somewhere way down, it's, you know, 2.8 grams a day. But I think, you know, and I blame people, communications people, for that. It's the way we wrote news releases and print publications, and it's really, that's how um, a lot of our stuff is written. So we've realized that we have to undergo this paradigm shift to really change. Um, you know, we, we can't control things anymore. It's the user who's controlling it, and either we change or they're going to leave. So uh, we realize we have to actually rewrite all of our content, um, which is going to be a massive job. So I, I, I'll just leave you with a couple of, of key lessons that we learned that I, that I hope uh, you can benefit from the pain that we went through. I would say, you know, firstly, you know, seize the day. Uh, it's sort of an eat or be eaten. Um, to the people in this room, this is your moment. It's sort of, uh, right now we're grappling with Ebola, which is a terrible thing, but for our scientists who are getting to take a vaccine and move it forward in a way that would have taken years normally or to work on our quarantine measures, you know, it's an amazing thing. So as, as painful as sort of web renewal might be, it could be the greatest thing that, that's happening to us. So there are tire teams being developed. Um, you know, I see in this room a bunch of leaders uh, an ability to step up, and I think everyone who's here is an innovator, so, you know, we need you, and Web Renewal needs you. Uh, secondly, I'd say learn to be a good communicator, especially if you have those technical skills, because I can say, uh, you know, technical things scare people, and if you can learn to dumb down what you know to explain it to, like, a kindergarten level, uh, you'll really help uh, propel uh, understanding at the senior management uh, tables, which is what we need. Um, thirdly, I would say um, try and be reassuring because people are frightened by web renewal. We've told everyone, you know, don't worry, nothing is final on the web, and, and that tends to help them. Um, I would say also uh, be ruthless. Uh, you know, content is king, and uh, our content is not good. When we went through the accessibility um, process, we cut 60% of our content from our website, and not a single Canadian wrote to say, hey, where was that content? <laughs> so um, I encourage you to cut as much content as you can. And so I just, you know, to, to sum it up, I would say I think we're, right, we're sort of riding a really exciting wave here that it takes leadership, uh, skill, and courage and, uh, you know, when I look around the room, I feel very optimistic about the future of uh, the GC website. So, thank you.